So this right here is the Ymaxit 4HD 14 inch touchscreen portable monitor and I've been using it over the past few weeks and I have to say I'm actually pretty impressed with it but there are a few things, a few small quirks that kind of stand out to me and the fact that they brand this as a portable touchscreen monitor making it not so portable and not really a touchscreen. So in today's video let's find out if this thing is actually any good and worth the money. Now, this Ymaxit monitor is currently on Amazon for around about £169, but they seem to always have lots of sales and discounts on it, so if you're lucky, you might be able to pick it up a bit cheaper. So make sure you click the link in the description down below to see what the current price is. So when we receive it, it will turn up in this very basic white box, with a few key features on the side and a very basic drawing of it on the front. Inside we obviously get that super slim 14 inch portable monitor with a full HD IPS screen. Also inside I got a screen protector which is something that no one else seems to have mentioned in their reviews of it. So maybe this is a recent change and a nice to have considering this is a so called portable monitor. We also get a few different cables from a USB-C to USB-C cable, a HDMI to HDMI mini cable, also a USB-A to USB-C cable along with a power adapter. We also get a soft cloth to keep that screen clean and also some paperwork and an instruction manual. So let's jump into the design and look of this monitor and I have to say I actually really like the look of it. It's only 10mm at its thickest point and it only weighs just over half a kilo. The majority of the build is aluminium which you can see covers the entire back, stand and also the sides which makes it feel nice and high quality. The front has a small 60mm plastic bezel all the way around three sides of the screen with a slightly larger 14mm millimeter chin on the bottom which also has a picture of their logo on it. I mean this is okay, personally I'd prefer it if it was just plain on the front but hey it's their logo and their product they can do what they want with it. Now on the back we have this really nice subtle built in aluminium stand which articulates almost all the way around to get this monitor in pretty much any angle we'd like. I also really like the fact that they've added a rubber section on the bottom of the screen and small rubber feet on the stand which really gives it stability especially if we're going to be using this as a touchscreen. But one thing to note is that the rubber feet only work when the screen is fairly upright. Once it gets past a certain point then it's just raw aluminium that touches, which does mean it starts to slide and I'd be slightly concerned that it might scratch the surface we're using it on. So I would have liked to have seen those rubber feet go all the way around the stand to stop this from happening. But when that stand is fully out we can even use this in the portrait position which is really cool, but again there isn't any rubber sections on the side of the monitor or the stand, so it won't be gripping the table so not ideal if you you're going to be using it as a touchscreen. Also you only really have this one portrait position as you cannot angle it back which might be slightly annoying especially if you're sat fairly close to it. But having this built in stand is great as it does give us loads of flexibility and it does feel nice and secure when we're moving it around as it has lots of friction. I also really like the way that it snaps closed to keep the side profile nice and thin. Also a little side note you'll notice that it does not have a visa mount on the back so we won't be able to attach it to a monitor stand which does make sense due to how slim it is and the fact that it's branded as a portable monitor. I mean if you really wanted to hard mount this to something then we could probably use it almost like a picture frame by putting that stand all the way up and then maybe getting a nail in a wall and basically just hang it up like a picture frame that means we can easily take it down when we want it to be more portable but that's obviously the way they've designed this is to be a portable monitor hence there's no kind of hard fixings to the actual back of this monitor and when we do actually snap that stand closed you'll notice that it covers up all of the ports which are on the back side of the actual monitor now i don't know if this was a design choice or just a coincidence but i do like the fact that it covers up those ports as it does help to protect them especially when we're going to be traveling around with it but this obviously does mean that we have to unplug any cables from those ports to be able to pack it down nice and flat. Now we do have three ports on that back right. We have two USB-C ports which can be used for either powering the screen or as inputs from a device and also a HDMI mini port. We can even have inputs into all three of these ports and manually change which input we want to see on the screen by using the buttons on the opposite side. Here we have the power menu exit button, a wheel used to navigate the screen's menu and also a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now these buttons are pretty fiddly to use as they're so close to the edge of the screen 
screen, but I do like the fact that they are hidden away and out of sight and not positioned on the front of the monitor. One issue you might actually have with that headphone jack is the fact that it is so tight up against the side of the monitor that if you have a large headphone cable, it won't actually plug in and you'll have to use a slimmer headphone jack to actually get it in. Also, having these buttons on the opposite side of the cables means that if you're using it in the portrait position, we cannot have access to the buttons unless we pick up the screen. Also, another little side note, I do like the fact that those inputs are set back behind the screen and not just on the side of it. And if you want to go to Amazon and pick up one of these small adapters, you will be able to flip the cables around to get a cleaner look. Now, I don't actually have or use those adapters, but if we did, it basically would stop the cables going into the monitor like this, which then means that the portrait mode, we can flip it 180 degrees to be able to get to the buttons on the opposite side. Now, even though this monitor is super thin, they've also managed to put in two built-in speakers, which sound okay. I mean, nothing great, but to be honest, they sound a lot better than what I was expecting, considering how small they must be. And this is an audio test with their built-in speakers. For mobile phone gaming, which is really, really awesome. And as soon as Xbox announced this design, only a few days ago for me, I jumped straight onto the Microsoft Store to buy one of these myself. Now this is an audio test with the MacBook Pro built-in speakers. This world is wireless and it also has Bluetooth as well. So not only can you connect it to your Xbox, you can even link this to your PC or even your mobile for mobile phone games. Now let's actually take a closer look at the actual screen. And like I said, this is a 14 inch diagonally 1920 by 1080 full HD IPS screen, which is also a touch screen some of the times. It is also an anti-glare matte screen, which some people might not like, but personally, I actually really like it. And yes, like I keep saying, this is also a touchscreen, which only works in some situations, but I'll talk more about that in a moment. But this screen having an anti-glare matte finish does help slightly to reduce fingerprints, but after a while, you'll definitely start to see them. Personally, I don't feel like that anti-glare hinders the screen at all, and it does help soften those reflections slightly. And its viewing angles are pretty decent too. And I can imagine there's only gonna be one or maybe two people really viewing this screen at once. But if you do have more people or you're looking at it from the side, then they should still be able to see pretty well. It says its max brightness is only 250 nits, but I've not needed it to be any brighter as I feel like it does a great job at showing a decent image. The colors seem to pop nicely and the fact that it's only a HD screen doesn't really matter when the screen is only 14 inches as the image it produces is actually really nice and sharp. The colors seem to pop really nicely and seem pretty accurate and the overall HD image seems nice and sharp. But that being said, I personally wouldn't use this as my color correcting monitor. And the screen is also 60 Hertz, which which helps to keep things smooth and flow fairly nicely. By using the button and wheel on the back, we can go into the screen settings and be able to customize and change a few things. From picture, color effects, see information from the screen, reset the screen, and even jump into advanced settings, see other options, and change the screen's color temperature. But most of those settings are just left as standard, but I did change the game mode to RTS, which really helps to pop the brightness and color compared to the standard mode, which just seems to be super dull in comparison. This screen also says it supports HDR, which allows us to see more dynamic range in pictures, videos, and games, which I left on the auto setting. But if we do turn it on, it will try to mimic the standard signal to a HDR signal, which does not look good at all. There just seems to be way too much contrast and the saturation is just all over the place. And the overall size of the screen is going to be a personal preference. Some people might like it bigger, some people might like it slightly smaller than 14 inches, but I think 14 inches is probably the perfect size for me personally. 14 inches makes it a really decent size to actually work on and to travel around with. Anything smaller would just be a little bit too kind of awkward and small to properly work on. And being a HD IPS screen makes the price kind of smaller less than if this was like a OLED 4K portable monitor. If it was, the price would be dramatically increased and you probably wouldn't want to just throw this in your bag and go traveling with it. Okay, now I want to talk about the connectivity, the portability, and also the touchscreen aspect of this screen because depending on what device you're plugging it into really changes this actual screen's kind of capability. So let's plug it in and find out what the differences actually are. So if we wanted to attach it to a switch, you've basically got two options. One of them is by using the dock and by putting the actual switch into the dock, 
Then we can use the HDMI out of the dock to the HDMI mini port, plug that into the actual monitor, but you'll notice that the screen will not turn on because that HDMI cable doesn't carry any power to it to actually boot this up. We actually need to power the monitor itself. So to do that, we can use the other USB to USB-C cable, plug in the USB-C into the side of the actual screen, and then plug into that USB port on the back of the switch. That now means that USB cable gives the monitor power. So we have the visuals coming from the HDMI and also the USB-C to USB-A cable gives it power to actually turn on. And just now I kept talking about the touchscreen. Um, this basically means that the switch is not touchscreen compatible. Alternatively, if you don't actually want to carry the dock with you and you've just got your actual switch, there's a different workaround we can actually do. If we just use that USB-C cable and plug directly into the monitor and then into the bottom of the actual switch, this doesn't actually give enough power. We then have to power the screen separately. So if we use that USB-A to USB-C cable, plug in the USB-C cable on the side, and then use something like a power brick like this, that now gives the screen power, that will then boot it up, and that now means that the switch is now working, and that is probably the best sort of portable setup you can get with a portable battery charger, no dock for the switch, just plugging it directly in. And you'll notice that there's no screen on the actual switch, all of the screen is now on the actual monitor. So you cannot play on this and this at the same time. And again, it basically means it's not a touchscreen. And if you're wondering, can you actually connect it to an iPad for a second screen? I think it's a bit confusing as well. If we use that USB-C cable, plug in to the side of the iPad and then plug that USB-C cable into the side of the monitor, it gives you a pass through. So we do not have to actually power the screen separately, but still not a touchscreen. And you'll notice as well that it kind of reframes and recrops the actual iPad. So we've got these massive bezels on the side. So this still stays as a touchscreen, but the actual touchscreen doesn't work on here. And again, if I boot up a video, you can see that that still doesn't make this go full screen, which is a big shame that we have these massive bezels around the edge. It's probably some form of software issue with the actual iPad. It might update in time, or if you've got a brand new iPad Pro or something, might give you access to the full screen, but it is a big shame. And again, I just don't know why the touchscreen doesn't work on here, but the touchscreen obviously does work on here because you're basically mirroring the screen. And I've not been able to work out how to have a separate screen on the iPad than on here. It basically just does a direct mirror of the two. But that could be cool if you're gonna be going on a flight and there's no in-flight entertainment. You and your partner could basically be watching the same film at the same time on two separate screens rather than trying to share the one screen on the iPad. Okay, and now connecting it to my MacBook Pro. So we can use that USB-C cable, plug it into the laptop, and then plug it directly into the actual monitor and you'll notice that we don't actually need to power it separately again. This cable carries enough power to the actual screen. But one thing I notice is when I plug it directly into the Mac, for some reason it's only coming through at 720. We have to then go in the settings and change it to HD. If we go into system preferences and then to the display of the actual monitor and then click scaled, you'll notice that 1920 by 1080 is not an option. But if we then click on show all resolutions, 1920 by 1080 pops up. If we then click done, that will then basically make this screen or make this monitor full 1080 again. And when it is all set up like that, we can then go in and choose if we want to actually mirror the image to have the same image on both screens or have it as a separate monitor like I've got here and how I've actually been using this monitor. And by doing that, that now means that this becomes a touchscreen with the Mac which is kind of weird that it doesn't work as a touchscreen with an iPad, which is a touchscreen, where a Mac screen isn't a touchscreen, but this becomes a touchscreen. But even this form of touchscreen only works in a very, very basic way. Yes, it will pick up certain clicks and certain buttons on a web page, for instance, 
That seems to basically be it. If I want to do any form of gesture like pinch to zoom, that won't work. But obviously a pinch to zoom on a trackpad basically does a nice zoom. And if I want to go between my different desktops on this screen, I would use three fingers on my trackpad and I can move between my different desktops. For instance, to see the script of today's video, using three fingers on this actual screen doesn't actually seem to do anything. Also something which is very random and very strange, if we've got the screen set up in the portrait position like this, wherever I actually press on the screen, you might notice here that it basically doesn't pick up where I'm pressing. So the mouse is there. If I press down here, the mouse basically just kind of does the opposite of what I'm doing. I don't know if I'm completely missing something or if there's some form of driver I've got to install on the Mac, but at the end of the day, this isn't a plug and play thing and I've not basically worked out what on earth um, this is doing. But this really isn't too much of an issue for me as I just won't use it as a touchscreen. I will just use the trackpad on my MacBook Pro like I would with any other external monitor. But it's kind of cool when we're watching a video that we can just play and stop and scrub around and find images or whatever, however you're going to use a touchscreen. So I'm not that worried that the, the touchscreen works half the time, not all the time. It only works through USB-C, not through HDMI. I don't actually have a PC or a PC laptop or anything to try it out to see what it works like on there. And also, unfortunately, I don't have a Samsung phone to plug this into a Samsung phone because apparently if you do, it can boot up into some form of tablet mode and you can use this screen as a tablet. Other people connect it to things like Raspberry Pis and mini computers and stuff and just use it as a sole screen for like mini computers and stuff. So there's a lot of variety and a lot of options you can do with a screen like this. And for me personally, Personally, this is pretty much how I think I'm going to be using this monitor going forward as a nice, small, super portable kind of traveling editing setup because all you need is that super slim, super thin screen and a single USB-C cable. So there we have it. That was the Ymaxit 14 inch full HD touchscreen portable monitor kind of portable, kind of touchscreen. So yes, like we explained, there are a few quirks with this monitor, but overall, I do actually really like it. The fact that it is so slim and so portable, and I can just plug it straight into my laptop and power it with no actual extra power needed. It is ideal for me as a backup monitor. I can keep this on my desk because it's not really taking up much space. I can put it in a drawer if I want to put it away and I can even throw it into my camera bag and take it on a travel trip, a travel editing trip to better use it with my laptop because it's a decent size to actually use. And I'd love to know what do you think in the comments section down below. Have you used one of these before? Are you interested in using one of these? And if you have, Maybe explain in the comments section down below, have I missed something, the, the touchscreen aspect of it? Do I need to be loading drivers onto my laptop or something to actually use it? But there we go. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. I'd love to hear all of your thoughts and ideas. And if you found this video interesting and informative, a cheeky like and subscribe would be... Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> A cheeky like and subscribe would be really appreciated. And if you're interested in picking one of these up, it will be linked in the description down below. And until next time, keep on creating.